Certainly there's a, a lot of news right now about running out of IPv4, moving to IPv6. Uh, these addresses are the addresses used on internet packets. And all the, and all of the, hold it closer to, hold it closer to my okay, well. <laughs> And all of the web traffic and all of the traffic uh, that we ever do with our laptops and our servers and the entire internet traffic load is divided up into these packets, every one of which has an address, two addresses, uh, one to say where it's going, one to say where it has come from. Um, and I am here to remind everyone that the address showing where the packet came from is not secured in any way. Uh, so if you imagine that um, this panel was made up of internet hosts, uh, I can transmit a packet to Danny claiming that it is from ROM. And Danny will not answer me, he will answer ROM. Um, so uh, what that means in practice is that if I send a lot of packets to Danny uh, in, that cause Danny to send a lot of responses, uh, he's going to send those responses to ROM. If I send a lot of packets to everybody on the panel claiming they're from ROM, ROM gets all the responses. Um, that's a lot of responses, and especially for DNSSEC, where the responses are much larger than the requests. So it's a very cheap attack to launch, um, and a very expensive attack to defend, which is, I think, what Ron's point was. But it's, uh, it's actually much more pervasive than just that. Um, I can send a whole bunch of people uh, attack traffic, claiming that it's from Ron, causing his support phone to ring off the hook with complaints about why he is attacking their computers. Um, this is not news. The internet has always worked this way. There is a relatively trivial technology that was standardized by the IETF back in, I think, 1998. Uh, there's an RFC, there's a BCP. Uh, I wrote a short four-page executive summary meant for non-technologists in 2002 for the ICANN Security and Stability Committee asking people please take a look at this uh, because it's a great gaping hole and it is uh, it's still there. Nobody's done anything. The router vendors, Cisco, Juniper, people like that, have added features to their platform to allow them to control this kind of thing. But by its nature, you can only control this if you are very close to the source. In other words, you can prevent your customers. An ISP can prevent its own customers from forging addresses that do not belong to that ISP. Uh, because they know, hey, you're my customer. I know what addresses I gave you. You're not using those, so I'm going to drop those packets on the floor. That works. But at a larger distance, it doesn't work. So if you are talking to someone else's customers, it has their traffic has passed through enough different routers that you can't prove that they're false. So you can't tell the difference between a fake one and a true one. And that is the state of affairs as it exists today. There is no large ISP in any country who has turned on this feature in every Cisco router and every Juniper router that they have. There's nobody anywhere who enforces this against their own customers because there's no economic incentive to enforce it against their own customers. Because to, to do so, they drive their own operations costs up and the only protection they offer is to other people's customers. So to drive your costs up in order to drive, uh, to help your competitors save money on attacks is uh, senseless. It makes no business sense. And uh, until we solve this, every other problem that we face in internet infrastructure will be amplified. And the internet will be uh, very fragile when it really should be very resilient given uh, how much we depend